Hello, everybody. This is going to be a quick video that uh, talks about the studio today. So um, it's going to be the lock ordering studio. Um, and so the link is here. And the idea is that we're going to um, build something that gives you some intuition about how to lock on multiple objects. If you don't, if your system doesn't have a nice feature like isolated, uh, we could have used isolated, but um, it seemed like much better to sort of build two studios, uh, this one and the uh, all or nothing lock studio, which is going to come up later or next time. It seems better to uh, build something that prevents deadlock like isolated does than to just use it and have this magic box, which you don't fully understand. And quite frankly, uh, the systems that you will build in likely will not have that. So uh, if you wanted to build that wonderful property, uh, how would you do it? <clears throat> and uh, this gets to a sort of higher point, which is uh, don't accept the synchronized in your life. Uh, this whole idea that invoking other, like as something as straightforward as invoking an object's methods or doing anything at all can create problems where you would like get deadlock, right? It's kind of crazy. And <clears throat> when I first started programming in Java many, many moons ago, um, there was just this thing where it's like, oh, there's this feature, it's synchronized, it might deadlock, just be careful. And I just sort of accepted that forever. And um, you shouldn't do that. You should, uh, if you're faced with that sort of thing, you should build something like what we're going to build today um, and uh, for the next studio for your system so that you uh, will order your locks and make it so that you never have to worry about deadlock. And so let's get into it. This uh, example is going to, uh, that we're going to do where we're going to transfer money from one account to another account comes from a fantastic book called Java Concurrency in Practice. For those of you who are very interested in learning about um, concurrent programming specifically in Java. This is an outstanding book. Um, it came out uh, right as uh, sort of JDK 7 came out and uh, Sun and now Oracle did a ton of stuff to like make this try like to add a ton of features to uh, Java, you know, JDK 8 and beyond uh, that you would think would make this book uh, obsolete. This book is so good that it that even with all those things, uh, this is still an outstanding uh, uh, thing to read. So I highly recommend it to anybody who's interested in concurrency specifically for Java. Okay, so here's the <clears throat> idea is there's got an interface for an account. Uh, accounts have a unique ID number, um, a balance, and you can call deposit or withdraw on it. And we wrote this little thing, uh, check balance and transfer. You know, it uh, sees if the sender has enough money. <laughs> if it, uh, or if it, if it doesn't, if the sender doesn't have enough money, it returns like insufficient funds. Um, if you try to, tr if the sender and the recipient are the same thing, like right, they're the same unique uh, ID number, it will uh, basically uh, say like intra account uh, transfer omitted, and otherwise it will withdraw money from the sender and deposit it in the. Um, recipient and return success. Now, it's, note there is no synchronization in this method. There is no um, uh, there is no locks used. There is nothing to prevent this thing from. Um, this says if you called this for multiple tasks, it would absolutely have a data race, um, right? Like at any moment in here, this this thing can go terribly, right? And so. Uh, let's attempt to safely transfer money. So the first thing I want you to imagine is like for all things, um, for all you know tr transactions you want to make, uh, take the uh, sender and the recipient and transfer from here to here. Like this is a big, fat, ugly data race, so this is no good. Um, you can imagine this other aspect where you have one global lock, right? And I do the same code, and before I transfer any money, I synchronize on that lock. And that will work, right? That's like sort of like, meh, all right. So now, like this is correct, but now I can only, now I've got this sequential code, right? Like I can only transfer one at a time. It's like sequential, but worse, right? And if I have millions of recipients, uh, excuse me, millions of accounts in my bank, right? Now everyone has to wait for this one lot, like everyone has to wait for absolutely everyone to finish um, before, excuse me, no two transfers can go on at the same time, right? And so that's not really what we're looking for. You could synchronize on just the sender, right? And 
But now, like, you know, multiple people could be transferring to the recipient. And so this is also a data race and a disaster. And you could synchronize on both objects. So the sender and the recipient, you'd have to acquire both of them, right? Both locks, both uh, intrinsic locks, before you transfer money. This is now thread safe, right? Because, um, and it doesn't have the same problem as this guy. You know, like if you have millions of accounts, like most of the time, everyone's just transferring money and having a fall. And only if like, you know, uh, two of the many, many transfers you have to do are between, you know, have these guys, would you have to wait, but it'd be okay. The problem is, is that um, you can get deadlock, right? And so let's talk about uh, why that's another uh, Mr. Yuck. Um, you can imagine like you have two accounts, A and B, and one of them, one of them you're sending from A to B and the other you're sending from B to A. So now we have the same sort of problem as the Dunning philosophers, but just with two. We all of a sudden have this cycle and this can deadlock. Um, and we don't want to allow deadlock. That would be very bad for a bank. Um, and so, you know, I want everyone to think about what's your solution to this problem. Okay, and so we're back and hopefully a fair number of you are like, well, it's just sort of the same ordering thing we had to do with dining philosophers. I just have to figure out some way to uh, make it so that um, I would never get a cycle. So if, if I always did whoever was before, so if I always happen to do them in order of A then B, right? So on this side, I would do sender recipient and this side, I would do recipient sender. I'm in good shape, but how do I do that? And so nicely, you know, this bank account has this unique ID number, <laughs> right? Um, and if I just order my, my locks based or which ones I get through synchronized on based on this unique ID number, I'm in good shape, right? So, uh, so that's nice for bank accounts that happen to have this unique ID number. Um, how can I do this for any arbitrary objects? And so like another way to put it is like, how does object-based isolation work and what does it work to internally? Um, sort of general solution, what uh, Isolated used to do, I actually encourage them to use identity hash code, um, is use hash code, right? Now, um, different objects often have different hash codes, uh, which is nice. Um, the, the calculation may require iteration. It may require, uh, for example, lists. Uh, it might actually re acquire a lock. It might take a long time. Uh, there's this nice other one, which is identity hash code, which is even more unique. Um, nicely, the identity hash code never changes. It's implementation specific, but it's almost always, or I think always, the original memory location that it, the object was allocated in. Um, and its calculation is very fast, does not acquire a lock. I guess it could be implementation dependent, but like, you know, it's always just its original memory location and never changes. Um, there is a crazy situation where one would think one's original memory location for an object would never be the same as some other object. Um, for those of you who know about garbage collection, uh, you can imagine, and this does happen, if you, I, this, I've actually been burned by this uh, in my life, where if you have a system that a million people use, um, you'll eventually get a situation where like two things end up with the exact same identity hash code uh, because um, one object gets uh, garbage collected, the the, uh, and I encourage everyone to look up garbage collection uh, if you don't know about it. Uh, the objects get moved around, some space opens up, and now two objects' original locations happen to have the same identity hash code. Uh, the solution in this incredibly rare circumstance is to just have a third object lying around or some like global object, and you leave that object hanging around, and anytime two objects happen to have the identity, same identity hash code, you would synchronize on that bonus object. Um, this would mean every object that was in this case would have to um, would have to wait, but this would almost never happen. This is an incredibly rare situation, so that's a good solution to that problem. Okay, for today's studio, I want you to assume that all account IDs are the unique. Um, if someone tries to transfer account for themselves, just return intra account transfer omitted. We we uh, put that into transfer money. Um, use synchronized. Um, and you want to minimize the contention, right? So you want to uh, don't acquire just a single lock. You want to prevent deadlock and good luck and have fun.